Fellow makers, and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now, as any artist can tell you, when you work in a studio, at times it really becomes more of a laboratory. We're always experimenting and trying new things to see if we can get that technique or to solve a problem that's been dogging us. Now, one of the challenges that I've had with a lot of my work is making sure that my lines, especially when I'm painting on canvas, are perfect. And I'll be honest, I'm not the best with a paintbrush. I get a little sloppy like a lot of artists do. And uh, I go places where I don't want to go. And as a result, you kind of have to figure out how to solve your problems when you messed up and you went outside the lines. And I don't want to have that happen. So I've been thinking a lot about this idea of how can I make sure that I don't go outside the lines. And uh, I'll be honest with you, it was not an easy path for me to get here because I tried a whole bunch of different materials. Now in the past I've done tutorials on how to use masking tape and by using masking tape and sealing the lines so we can create really nice clean lines and that works perfectly, but it works great if you're working on straight lines. What happens if your lines are really curved like these? So I have laid out a canvas here, and by the way, I've used some charcoal so you can see the lines. Normally I'd be a little bit more subtle and use some sort of a pencil, but I wanted you to be able to see these. And let's just say I'm planning ahead and I wanna have something that's kind of circular over here, and I'm gonna have kind of this shape in the middle that really has these wavy lines. Not only that, it's kind of long, right? So how are we gonna make that happen? And imagine going in here with masking tape and trying to curve those lines. It's not gonna look the way we want it to look. So the real challenge is one of the, the, the distance of the lines, the length of these lines is gonna be hard for us to work with. Now I went in and I tried a bunch of things. I said, all right, what about parchment paper? That's sort of water resistant. And it turns out even wax paper, things that have paper in them, when they get wet from the paint, and they do, they start to pucker, they start to wrinkle, and the paint gets underneath them. So as a masking surface, they're kind of lousy. And so I was very disappointed until it occurred to me one fine day, wait a second, what about plastic? Is there some sort of a plastic sheet or something like that that I could use? And so I did a little research and it turns out there is. So I found these acetate sheets. Now you can't see them because they're transparent, but trust me, I'm holding a piece of plastic here. And it's a very thin piece of plastic. And the beautiful thing about this is it allows me, if I wanted to, to put it over my artwork. And if I were to grab a pen, and I have just a, a, a marker here, a Sharpie that will allow me to create a, a permanent mark. And I'm actually gonna come up here and just do it so that I don't use up my entire sheet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna trace over the line that I have on my canvas. And uh, I can also maybe go outside the line here. Maybe I'll do that, just make it so they end up covering the black entirely or try to wash it away somehow. I'll just come right around there like that. And what I'm trying to do here is in essence, I wanna create a place where I can cut out a hole. I wanna cut out a hole. What's actually gonna be the mask is what's left behind. So this other part of it over here, right? Right here and right here, right here and right here. This will be the part that I wanna be able to then use almost as a stencil. Well, actually as a stencil. So let me do a couple things here. First of all, let me grab a pair of scissors and I'm just gonna kind of cut out my basic shape here. And come up here. There we go. All right. And uh, then what I want to be able to do is I want to get in here with my scissors and I want to cut out that line. Uh, one of the challenges I just will share with you is when you're cutting through acetate, it's, it's pretty sturdy stuff. So getting, getting it started so you can get your scissors in there is sometimes the biggest challenge. And I'm just going to come here and I'm going to cut right outside my red line. And in this scenario, if it doesn't match up absolutely perfect, 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 it's not going to be a big thing. I'm just trying to obscure and get that basic shape. So I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna take my time. Yeah, I know, it's what you do today on the internet. Well, I watched some guy cut out plastic. It was fascinating, said no one ever. And yet it is such a necessary part of making this happen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take my time and do it right the first time. That's an old saying, you never have time to do it right the first time, but you always have time to do it right the second time. Yeah, don't wanna be that guy today. And come back around here, and let's just match back up with our line. And I think we got it. Okay, so again, what I'm doing with this is I'm, I'm creating a circle around a circle. But I found a really interesting product called Pixie Spray. Now, um, this is not a, a pitch for Pixie Spray. I will say they're made by a th company called Thermo Web. 
And uh, the thing about this, this is a spray adhesive, but it's designed to be repositionable, which is exactly what I need because if I'm going with something that is going to uh, stick to the canvas permanently, I don't want that. I want something I can put down, use, and then peel up. Or if I put it down accidentally in the wrong place, I can pick it back up and reposition it. And that's what I'm looking for. Now to use the pixie spray, I'm gonna drop a little bit of uh, newspaper here on my work table. And I'm going to use the, uh, the, the back side of what I'm trying to do here. And all I'm simply doing, let me just pull this over a little bit so you can see it, is I'm just going to take my spray and I'm going to spray it around the edges here. Now what I'm really focusing on is just that, the kind of the edges around my circle. And we'll get right in there. Now one of the things I will say about this product that I really like is not a lot of nasty fumes coming off of this. Otherwise, you'd feel compelled to do this outside somewhere. Actually, there's no odor at all, which is fantastic. And what I want to do then is just bring it back over and reposition it on my canvas where I want it to go. Now, do I just start slapping some paint on there and all this good in the world? No. Once again, we want to take advantage of an interim step that's going to make this a success for us. And that is going to be our friend, Liquid Medium. Now, we've talked about Liquid Medium before on this channel. I've talked about it a few times. Liquid Medium is a, it's a pigment-free paint. And the advantage of this pigment-free paint is it basically paints invisible, right? So unlike something which had a color, which we'd be able to see, this is going to paint and dry clear. Now, why would we want to use something like that? Well, let's just say I come in here and I throw some paint into this circle, and it does end up leaking into the little holes that are going to be left behind by this layer of plastic, right? Because invariably, we've got the canvas on here, we've got plastic on it, there's going to be nooks and crannies underneath it. And if I do that, I'm going to have something that just has kind of paint just leaking under and that defeats the whole purpose because I could do that myself. Instead, what I want to do is I want to put the liquid medium in place and I want to use it as a clear paint that's going to actually do the same thing. It's going to leak under the edges, but when it does that, it's going to seal everything up, right? So once it seals everything up, it dries. Now, if I paint another coat on top of it, guess what? It has no place to leak to. So because the liquid medium has already filled up all the nooks and crannies, the paint stays where we want it to be. See? So that's how that works. Now, you don't need an awful lot of, uh, of the clear medium. I'm just going to get some drops in here. And I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally recommend doing when I'm painting anything with using a mask. But I'm going to say, when you are painting, paint toward the crack. Now, normally I'd say, let's paint away from it so nothing leaks under. But in this case, we do want to kind of clog that thing up. So I'm going to grab and I'm going to push it toward the crack. And again, most of my masterpieces don't have charcoal all over them. Because that doesn't necessarily make it look better. But I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so in here. So happy with how that's going to work. Now, once again, I need to let that dry. And... This is super important, so listen up. I need to really let that dry. Because here's what I've done. As I've taken this liquid and I've put it in here, some of it's gonna get under the plastic. Well, what happens if you put liquid under plastic? Does it dry real fast? It doesn't, it doesn't. So as a result, it's gonna take extra time for that liquid medium to get to a point where it's not gummy. Here's the reality. If I didn't wait long enough and I started throwing some paint right on this right away, when I go to take the plastic off, it's going to peel up anything that's not currently dried, which means I'm going to end up with a weird line that I don't want, kind of jaggies, where it tore the liquid medium away. So I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be a patient human being. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, every so often I watch those baking shows on television, and, and I'm not necessarily a, a class baker, although I, I aspire. Uh, I, I'm certainly not somebody who spends a lot of time making cakes at home, so I don't normally have this stuff lying around, but there is a product that you can use to wrap your cake so that you get a perfect frost to it. You've probably seen these, right? So it kind of covers the outside of the cake, or if you're making things, and it just keeps everything nice and smooth. And that product looks like this. And guess what? It's an acetate tape. Now, it's not adhesive. It's like the plastic. It's really just acetate sheeting, but it's long. And so as a result, what I can do with something like this is I can use it to cover up my line in a very similar way to what we just did. And that way I can now draw on top of this, cut it out, and have something that works as a pure mask. I can do that on both sides. Now, let's just say what I'm trying to do, the overall objective is to be able to 
paint the shape that's inside between these two lines. That's what I'm doing. So I want to be able to mask and just have this, you know, one side in here. So in this example, we're, we're kind of taking that saying, I do want to have these lines. And I'm going to come in here once again with my marker, and I'm just going to kind of come down the outside of my charcoal line like that. I just want to kind of obscure that guy. Woohoo! All right, so there we go. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a moment to cut this line out. I'll probably speed it up for you because you don't need that much fun in your life. And then we'll get it uh, adhered using the same pixie spray that we used before. <laughs> Okay, so we did it. And so... Just make sure we get all of that. Okay, is there anything? Please. And uh, let's come in here and let's drop this in here like that. Now, for the sake uh, interest of time, I'm not going to mask the other line. I, we can imagine, of course, the same process. I would come in here and I would take this and I would flip it and put it down. I may do it off camera so you guys don't have to spend time watching me do that. We'll get to the conclusion. And uh, once again, it's uh, liquid medium time. So I'm going to grab this, grab my paintbrush, and a similar process to what we did before. Let me just come in here and I'll just leave some drops down here. Dunk. I'm going to let this dry maybe till tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see how the day goes. And then uh, we'll see about putting some paint on here and we'll figure out what's going to happen next. All right, welcome back. Now it's been about three hours, which should be a sufficient amount of time for uh, our medium to dry here. Uh, I'm going to put some blue here. This is going to be a blue zone. I'm going to put some pink here. Well, we're making modern art. Who the heck knows what this is going to look like. But my objective right now is to just get the paint on there. Now I will share with you, when I'm painting a color, I'm trying also not to push it under the cracks as, as vigorously as we did with the medium. And I just don't want to be able to do that. And so I'm going to just take my paint here and kind of just get down the sides and just make sure we cover up our lines sufficiently, but try not to pack it in there. That is not the overall objective. Let's just make sure we, uh, we give a chance. So, you know, we're, we're going to try to increase the odds that we're not going to have uh, smeared lines. That's what we don't want to do here. We don't want to smear our lines. So let me just come down here and, and here as well. And one of the things I love about this personally is then, you know, I don't have to be uh, as precise as I would really like to be. I, I really wish I were a good enough painter that I could be incredibly precise with my brush. Uh, the truth of the matter is I get a little bit haphazard and uh, then I just regret my decisions and like, oh God, I'm going to have to go fix that thing I didn't mean to mess up. So doing it this way is just going to make it a lot easier for me to plan ahead and say, all right, this is the line I want, and uh, I'm going to do what I can to make sure it comes out as clean as possible. Let's, uh, let's try to do the same thing over here with uh, our circle. All right, so get some pink in here, and again, I'm going to kind of paint away from the boundary, the border, as it were. And let's just get this put into place as well. Get my little, little streaks of blue in there, because that's what happens if you don't really clean your brush very well. It'll find its way out. It will. Sometimes it's an interesting effect. In this case, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. I'm going to come in here and uh, let's just fill the rest of this circle in with our color. Okay. Hang tight. When we get back, I'll show you what the reveal looks like. Okay, welcome back. Now, again, I've given this an opportunity to really thoroughly dry. I had to go in uh, and take care of some other things. And uh, so the paint is dry. There might be a, a few blobs in there we'll want to be, uh, be careful with. But for the most part, I think we're pretty good in what we're doing. Now again, slow and steady is going to really win the day here when we're peeling things off. Once again, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to 
start to pull up this and I'm going to try to best I can tear along the lines. I'm getting a little bit of the charcoal coming through which is you know wasn't my overall objective but for the most part I'm able to peel along and get the line that represents the cutting edge of my acetate sheet. Now I, I did run off the rails here again this is something I warned myself about and that it started to peel things up. The best solution for something like this is to take a utility knife before you get in too far into this and just easily, easily, easily run it along the edge of your paint line. It will follow the guide if, if all goes according to plan. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to jam the knife in there so hard you cut the canvas. That's not the objective. But overall, if we can come in here and put that paint back down, it gives me an opportunity to make sure that that is going to be free and clear. Let me do, do the same thing on this side. Again, let's just kind of keep it easy uh, by following the contours. I'm getting the super clean lines. Now granted, you know, where, where I didn't paint, I'm getting the kind of the schmutz left over for my charcoal. But let's come down here and again, let me just kind of, let me just guide this. There's no law that says it has to be automatic, right? Sometimes you have to work a little extra for the things that really matter to you, and this is one of those situations. Okay, all right, I'm feeling pretty darn happy about that. Now again, the, uh, the charcoal is a detractor here, but the big takeaway is that line from there to there is exactly the line I wanted. Didn't smear, didn't leak, no major problems. Let's see if we can get lucky up here with regard to the pink circle as well. Again, I'm just gonna take my utility knife and let's just go around in a big circle here. Make sure that if we have any paint kind of sticking to our stencil, that we uh, dissuade it from staying stuck. All right, I think we did it. All right, once again, let's come in here and uh, gently, gently, let's start to pull that up. It's a circle. <laughs> I, I, I painted an absolute circle, or whatever shape I wanted to paint, without having to go in there with my paintbrush and, and make sure it happens. I was able to draw it out, say this is what I want the shape to look like, and create a stencil uh, right here uh, to do that for me. Now, again, when you're working with any kind of surface like the one I've been working on, this is just a test canvas. This is a canvas that I re -gessoed. If you saw last week's video, you'll understand exactly what that's all about. We, I reclaimed this canvas. It had been used for something else, and I said, hey, I'm going to be running some more experiments. Let me just get this canvas uh, up. Now, I would come in here and I would probably create a, an additional line and I'd be able to use that as a way to mask, you know, my relationship between this color and the next color I wanted to put up here. And again, that's something you can do in very much the same way. We're just using our acetate sheets, whether it's the, uh, the square ones or the uh, long lengthy ones. So by using the acetate sheets, and by the way, all the, uh, in the description below, I'll have the links for everything you need in order to do what I just did here. So you can find these materials easily peasily. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to pull it from there. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for dropping by. And by the way, if this kind of thing you really enjoy, and, and why not? What's not the love here, huh? Uh, feel free to subscribe. Anyway, that's what I have for you. Thanks so much for dropping by. I'm Spider. I'll see you next time.